Okay, well, thank you very much, you guys, for taking the time today. I know you've got uh, the makeup and all the photography and all the things that are going on today, so thanks for taking the time. And I want to start with Shannon. Family legacy, how you got into curling. Um, understand that your grandpa, Peter, um, was one of the founders and owners of the Ontario Curling Report. Yes. And also uh, started a company called Pro Glove, and that actually introduced... Uh, White deerskin, which is still used today in the sport of curling. Uh, can you expand on that story about your, your grandfather? Yeah, I mean, um, I don't really know how he, you know, thought of it all um, initially, but I knew he was very close friends with um, Alfie and Ed Wernick and all of those guys from Ontario. And so I think just that closeness to the game um, gave an, him an insight as to where there were openings for, you know, new equipment needs and whatnot. So even though he didn't play at their level, he uh, was in tight with their group. And that inspired my dad to curl as well. And then we did as well. Yeah, when it comes to the uh, the Ontario Curling Report, the partners, I think, were Elf Phillips, Bob Weeks, and Ken Thompson, I think, were the original uh, yeah. group. So that's really, to walk back in time, like for me as a curling nut, uh, that's pretty cool to see a family tree, uh, somebody who revolutionized the game, really, and then now, now to you, who's uh, won so much. Yeah, it's pretty special, and um, my grandpa's going to be coming down to watch a few games this weekend, and my parents flew over to visit as well. So, yeah, it's nice to get all back together. We haven't seen him in person for a while because of COVID, so, um, yeah, I'm very excited to see him and, and very, you know, happy that I was introduced to the sport, and, and he uh, had such an influence on the sport as well. And Warren wanted me to make sure that everybody knew uh, that Warren Hansen, of course, uh, was one of the sales reps in the Pro Glove group. And he didn't, he wouldn't tell me the year. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not exactly sure what year it was, but it was probably a, a while ago. Shannon, I'd like to hear your thoughts uh, as one of the top sweepers in the game. Because um, there's a lot of, well, I get a million messages uh, to do with carving, uh, sweeping on which side, all of that kind of thing. And I, I would really like to hear about, on the women's side in the women's game, um, the thoughts of carving, uh, how good, how effective it is. And, uh, and did you, first of all, does your team do it? Our team definitely attempts to do it. Um, I think there is definitely a significant difference between um, how effective women can be and men, and it's just a simple... Um, difference in body weight the men can put a lot more pressure on the brush um and pressure seems to be the more effective way to affect the ice because the the broom heads themselves are not scratching the ice in the way they used to so it's more uh so uh for young people uh listening or watching that's what i'm trying to get at here so pressure more than speed then Yes, and for that's for carving. For carving. And I mean, that's kind of a general rule of thumb for sweeping in general. We found that pressure is more effective at dragging rocks and everything like that. So getting your weight Over. above above the uh, broom head mm -hmm. rather than being back a bit so you can put more speed on it. Yeah. You've, you, it's been discovered that there's no question about that. Yes. Huh, exactly. I didn't know that, actually. That's great. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> That's great. Uh, so, uh, okay, uh, that is excellent. Um, I would like to get into the new rules that uh, the World's Curling Federation, not new, I shouldn't say new rules, because they're not necessarily going to be new rules. But from a front-end point of view, uh, no tick zone. Uh, Any time in the game at the World Championships. Like it, hate it, and benefits or not so much. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not a fan of any of the new rule changes, but I would say the no tick rule offends me the least. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I am more okay with that one, I would say. No tick zone. I agree. Um, it's, yeah, that's probably the rule that um, we, that so we're least 10, affected by. <laughs> out of 10, uh, how do you feel about it? Out of 10. Um, yeah. About all the rules? Nope, the first one. No oh. tick zone. <laughs> No tick zone Out first. of 10, um, I would say a five. Okay. So, eh, okay. Yeah. Four minute ends. Oh, I got it. Oh, so I'm going to tell you a story. So this is, this is going back to um, thinking time, being in the slams and not being in the game. 
and you would be too young, I'm sure. But uh, the first game it was in Calgary, and the building's really steep. The Corral. It was at the Corral in Calgary. This event, and it was the first fem- the ladies' draw, the female draw of the players' championship, where we used thinking time. Every single sheet ran out of time, and then over time, though. It became quite easy. You guys are fast, so no problem with the, with the clocks at all. So now we went from like 73 minutes, whatever it was in the old-fashioned game, to thinking time per game, and now they're thinking, okay, time per end. I'd love to hear, well, I'm going to hear both thoughts because it's been, we've, we've talked to a lot of people, and it's not been consistent. <laughs> some people like it, some people really don't at all. Where are you at? I don't like it at all either. Um, it definitely rushes the game, and why does the game need to be rushed? Um, so I just think that um, on a skip slash shot, it's pretty crucial. Like, so I don't know. I just don't agree with it. Yeah, I don't. I don't agree with it either. Um, I don't think it makes the entire game faster. Because um, that is the hope, right? If that's what their goal is, and, I and don't the first think couple of ends instead of being hitting all the time, they're yeah. ho- they're hoping it maybe causes more offense early. Yeah. Do you think it will? Um, I think it will. Like people are just, it's going to take a good amount of time for people to get used to the flow of that time slot. Um, but yeah, it's just it's putting way too much pressure on the skips. It's like you're throwing with you know, 20 seconds left every end when maybe that only happens in the last end um, if you're not good with time. Um, and I think it also puts a lot of pressure on our wonderful volunteers who are manning the, the timers, you know. That's something that um, I know players have frustrations about even now, and so now it's even more pressure on them. And we don't want to have those kinds of things going on in the game and wow. we love our volunteers so what a great point yeah because you're right the volunteers there's massive pressure on them because you only got four minutes and yeah. you'd hate to have in a big game on television you're running out of time but then of course in, in the wonderful world we can go back and watch when the button was clicked every time and you could find five or ten seconds wow wouldn't that be something yeah. oh good point no extra ends and there's more to it than that um the end of the game having four potential outcomes. Three points, two points for a draw to the button win, one point for a draw to the button loss, and then a straight loss at zero points. So I guess first, um, love it or hate it on the no extra ends, but then the repercussions of having not just a win and a loss, but four possible outcomes of the game. That's an absolute ridiculous rule. (laughs) Um, I do not like that one at all. And I don't agree with it because that a draw the button determines your win loss like that is terrible. So I don't agree. Especially when you've played in worlds, well, two in a row lately. So so you, so if you think back to your scoreboard, how could that have affected your end result? Is that where it's coming from? Like yeah, it could have affected us big time. So yeah, don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's clear. <laughs> yeah, that's good, Shannon. Um, yeah, I agree. I agree with Carrie. Um, you know, it, it takes away the advantage of being up two in the last end. You give up a deuce and all of a sudden you're drawing to the button. The team that just scored that deuce actually now probably has the advantage because they might have been drawing all end in, in the last Trying end. Trying to get there too. So yeah, like the whole, the whole um, reasoning that the team with hammer and the extra end has too much of an advantage for winning, that's a strategic play. So I don't, I don't think the team with hammer should be punished for you know playing to have that advantage in the extra end, whereas they are kind of punished if they have to draw to the pin because the team that just scored most likely was drawing that end. Oh, that's awesome! Well, thank you very much, you guys, for taking the time. Really appreciate it, and good luck. Thank Thanks, you, Kevin. <laughs> you bet.